Planet Dolan. From catastrophic space explosions to drinking cups of disease-infested vomit, we count nine science experiments that ended in disaster. Yeah, yeah, what's up, YouTube fans? Pringle the one in the building. How we doing today? And today, guys, I got some crazy new content for your face. So here we go. Number nine, NASA Challenger Explosion. 30 years ago, the world witnessed a scientific space expedition go horribly wrong. A mere 73 seconds into takeoff, NASA space shuttle Challenger suddenly broke up and helplessly hurtled over the Atlantic Ocean. Several of the crew were apparently still alive after the immediate explosion, but not one of the seven crew members survived the brutal force of impact when the cabin plunged to the ocean floor. A design flaw in the shuttle's O-ring was reported as the culprit for the fatal malfunction. The tragedy brought America's space program to a halt for many years, while NASA implemented stricter safety guidelines to make future flights safer. Number 8. Marie Curie The Polish woman who revolutionized physics with her radioactive science experiments met an ironic fate when she died of extreme radiation poisoning. In 1898, Curie discovered and named two powerful elements, polonium and radium. At the time, not even Curie understood how lethal these elements were to humans. Curie would casually carry around radioactive tubes in her pocket, not knowing they were slowly killing her. To this day, the furniture that Curie and her husband Pierre had in their home is still too radioactive to even touch. Curie's science journals are locked away in lead-lined cabinets, which you can only touch if you're wearing safety clothes. Number 7. Alexander Bogdanov this Russian physician had some pretty wild ideas, including the blood transfusion experiment that led to his own death. Bogdanov's experimental projects spanned many fields – science, economy, philosophy, and even Soviet sci-fi literature. In his novel, Red Star, he wrote about a techno-communist society living on Mars where blood transfusions were the key to eternal youth. Bogdanov was so sure of this bloody immortality theory that he personally received over 11 transfusions in his life, ultimately causing his death when in 1928 he received blood contaminated with malaria and tuberculosis. His outrageous experimental thinking wasn't all in vain though. His theories provided some crucial foundations for modern cybernetics and systems theory. Number 6. Louis Slotin. At age 35, this Canadian physicist died from a colossal fusion reaction while attempting to assist in the construction of the world's first atomic bomb. Slotin was part of a team responsible for concocting extremely volatile levels of nuclear masses under controlled conditions. During one of his experiments, Sloan's screwdriver slipped and started a lethal chemical reaction. His quick reflexes knocked one of the spheres away, but the biological damage was already done. Each of the scientists watching the experiment was instantly poisoned by the invisible radiation. Sloan died in the hospital nine days later. The same sphere that killed Sloan was later implemented in the final product, America's first atomic bomb. Number 5. Monster Study In 1939, a psychologist named Dr. Wendell Johnson experimented on the minds of 22 orphan children to devastating and profound consequences. The orphans from Iowa were separated into two groups. The first were positively told that their speech and language was excellent. The others were negatively told that they were slow and stuttered. The positive group excelled, and some of those had stutter issues were cured. The negative group was devastated intellectually. Some children even developed a lifelong speech impediment when they spoke perfectly fine before. Though it was highly controversial, some people still argue that the experiment has provided valuable insights into the psychology of speech and stutter therapy. Number 4. Solomon August Andrea Three Swedish scientists attempt to fly an enormous hydrogen balloon to the North Pole in 1897, but never lived to tell the tale. Solomon and his men set sail, but 10 hours and 500 kilometers later, the balloon was battered by icy winds and forced to land. For the next two months, the trio lugged around their scientific supplies on sleds and killed polar bears for food. They finally found land by the third month, but they were starting to run out of food quickly and were sick from putrid bear meat. 153 years later, a Norwegian expedition discovered their bodies lying in a tent and brought them back to Sweden. Number 3. Charles Hofling An experiment that tested the psychology of power and influence showed that a lot of people will blindly follow authority, even when asked to do illegal things. Psychiatrist Charles Hofling called the hospital in 1966 pretending to be a doctor. He ordered 22 nurses to double the dosages of the drugs they would normally give a patient, a dose which would be strong enough to kill. The nurses didn't know that the drug had been replaced by a safe alternative, but 21 of the nurses surprisingly compiled anyway. The experiment alarmingly revealed how easily authority could coerce even the most educated nurses. Number 2. Emma Eckstein 
Sigmund Freud diagnosed Emma Ickstein with hysteria and excessive masturbation and recommended she have the inside of her nostrils scorched to cure a condition. Ickstein was referred to Wilhelm Fleiss, who numbed Ickstein's nostrils with cocaine before burning her inner nose. Fleiss claimed the procedure had worked miracles in other patients and even performed it on Freud himself, but Ickstein's nose became hugely infected from a piece of gauze that Fleiss mistakenly forgot to remove. She was left permanently disfigured and her hysteria heightened because of the ordeal. Her treatment was as extreme as her diagnosis. So, masturbation was thought to be incredibly dangerous for mental health in those days. Number 1. Stubbins Firth Late in the 1800s, Stubbins Firth tried to prove that yellow fever wasn't contagious by drinking the black vomit of an infected victim. Almost 10% of Philadelphia's population were killed in 1793 when yellow fever was running rampant through America. A trainee doctor at the time, Firth, was determined to prove his theory. So he smeared a victim's rancid vomit into cuts in his skin, poured it into his eyeballs, and fried the vomit to inhale the fumes. Turns out yellow fever is highly contagious, but needs contact with the bloodstream. Luckily for Firth, he avoided disaster because the vomit was no longer contagious, and he walked away scot-free, and it's so nasty! Oh, nasty. Firth, you are filth. Stubbins filth, everybody. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Peace! Did you enjoy the video? That's fantastic! Did you know we still have a gaming channel? Collaborative! It's for playing at all and come look at us as we play some video games! Like animation? Have some questions about life and the universe you need answered? Come check out Super Planet Dolan. Danger Dolan and I will answer your life questions. Links are down below.